Do you want to selling and weathering locomotives? Why don't you stick around and watch this segment, see how we do it on my scale model rare, the Sayher Secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back to the Locomotive Shop. So it's a new year, 2020, and I have a whole bunch of new projects laid out for us this year. So something different that I'm gonna do this year is, um, last year we kind of focused uh, on the decoder installs, and but this year I wanna focus more on the programming aspect of the decoders. So what happened was I was able to install um, video capture software on the, the computer down here that's connected to the layout, because that's what I use to program all my decoders. So this way I can capture the video and produce a real nice video and uh, show you how I do a step-by-step -step process. Now, when I uh, program my decoders down here, I use two different, uh, two different means. Uh, if I'm doing a standard decoder, I use the um, Digitrax, the PR3, to interface with the computer and use a JMRI software. If I'm doing an ESU decoder, I use the Log Programmer to interface through the computer and that's how I do that. So I'm gonna take you step by step. I'll show you the couple different ways of doing it and also show you how I do my roster entries on JMRI. So other than that, there's not gonna be really much changes. Um, still gonna uh, take you a step by step process of how I go through and, and get the locomotive ready and out on the layout. So for this month, uh, the locomotive that I chose is an Atlas uh, Classic. Uh, U25B. Um, these I bought a group of four of these from Ben and um, he it looked like he had stripped the paint because he was going to be doing a project so some of the work a lot of the heavy-duty work is done for us already because they're stripped down the primer and uh, we're going to be decorating these out. Um, now the U25B which you need to know is it's a 2500 horsepower four axle locomotive uh, produced by the GE Corporation from 1953 to 1966. Now, what's very important about this locomotive, this was the first locomotive that GE did on their own. They kind of broke their partnership with Alco and produced this product. Um, there was uh, approximately 479 of them made by the GE Corporation, and they lasted a long, long time. Um, after the uh, Conrail Day 1, Conrail inherited 179 of them from the predecessor railroads. Um, now, my research here is a little checkered. Um, looking at different sources, uh, Conrail Historical Society, the Conrail Encyclopedia, and a bunch of books that I have, um, the U25Bs lasted on Conrail till somewhere around 1985. All of the units were off property by 85. So um, a lot of them were used on trade-ins on the U23Bs, because uh, I guess they were using the traction motors and the trucks for the U23Bs uh, the, uh, at GE's uh, production facility. And a lot of them were just scrapped because they were just so beat up. So um, that's kind of a little of the backstory from Conrail's aspect. So the U25B for Conrail modelers is very uh, prolific because it was a very, uh, there was a lot of them being used in the rainbow years. And the rainbow years is kind of classified from day one, 1976, till around 1979. Now, what the rainbow years are is the, the units were all just patched out. They were in their original paint schemes. They blocked out the names and their heralds, and then they just painted it black over those blockouts and then put white CR. So um, that's kind of what the rainbow years are. All the U25Bs that uh, I found were shopped out and painted by 1978. I think there was a couple that were done in 79, looking at the Conrail uh, Cyclopedia online. So the decoder we're gonna be using this time is gonna be, again, ESU's uh, Direct Micro drop-in board. Uh, this board actually fits perfectly into the Atlas Classic chassis. Uh, there was, it just dropped right in. No, no, nothing crazy that I had to do, just like putting a normal decoder in. So consequently, when you look at this video, there's not gonna be a whole lot of that. Uh, just had to put the speaker in and then button it all up. So the uh, so this unit here we're going to be doing is 2664. Uh, I was able to find pictures of it online uh, done up in the Conrail Blue with the can opener logo. So that's what I've chosen for uh, the first one of the four. So uh, with that being said and all that backstory, uh, why don't you sit back and watch the video and I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay, here we are getting started. So I'm going to take the chassis and disassemble it and uh, pull the light board out. I've already tested these on a test track with a DC power and they ran good.
So installing the decoder was uh, rather simple in this chassis. The, um, the board just m fit in perfectly. There was no frame modification that needed to be made. Uh, so it was a rather easy uh, process. Okay, so now I'm going to solder on the wires to the board and connect up the speaker. Uh, and then I'll button it up and uh, hold everything together with Capcom tape. Once that's done, I usually take it over to the programming track and go ahead and program it now. But we'll go over that at the end here. The speaker box that Zima gives us is a little too big, so here I am making my own custom uh, baffle with uh, 040 plastic. All I do is cut it out and then I stick it onto the uh, sticky tape on the bottom of the speaker. And there it is, all finished up. Okay, so this unit was missing its brake wheel and horn assembly. So uh, I went to my box and took some old shells and cannibalized them to get the parts I needed. And uh, it turned out really well, um, so I'm pretty happy with that. So doing my research for this project, it looks like the U25s had two different types of brake rigging assemblies. Most of the Penn Central units that Conrail had had the round brake wheels, and the um, some of the other smaller railroads used the ratchet style. Again, uh, all the Penn Central units had the uh, cab signal assembly, so I'm adding that here because this unit is a Penn Central unit. Um, some of the other ones did not, so I would kind of look as you go to see which ones had them and which didn't. So after washing the uh, shell, I took it into the spray booth and we're going to spray it with uh, Monoflex Primer Gray. Uh, and then we'll let it dry overnight. Okay, so here I am priming all the walkways and uh, handrails. If you notice, I have the couplers installed. Those are the old Atlas couplers. Um, in the end, after all the paintwork is done, I uh, change them out for micro trains. I wanted to do that because I didn't want to get the coupler boxes all gummed up with paint, and that would just make more work. So I figured just leave in the old ones till the end and pull them out. So 
after drying overnight, uh, I come in with some Model Flex Conrail Blue and give it a nice even coat. So in doing my research, I found that all the U25Bs that Conrail painted, the pilots in front and back were black, including the steps. I couldn't determine if the uh, walkways were black or not, so I left them blue. Here I'm just using Tester's uh, acrylic black and painting them in with a brush. Okay, so here we are getting started with the decals. I use Microscale decals uh, number 60-628 Conrail Diesel and Data Striping and 60-627 uh, Conrail Diesels painted by EMD and Conrail for this project. So for the weathering for this project, I did my standard uh, overspray of Modelflex sand diluted down with some alcohol. Then I followed up with Bragdon weathering powders and then sealed it all up with Tester's dull coat. Okay, so final step here is I'm reassembling by putting the shell onto the chassis. Now you notice that there's some long wire leads and that's for the headlight. So I used uh, surface mount LEDs on magnetic wire for the headlight. And when I went to go glue it with hot glue up into the cab, um, it worked when I tested it, but then after I glued it, it didn't work. So uh, at that point I had everything all buttoned up and was finishing up the video and it's gonna be a project I'm gonna have to go back to replace that headlight.
wraps it up. Okay, everyone, so something a little new for the 2020 season of the Locomotive Shop. I've been able to set up a screen pra uh, capture program here on the computer in the train room. So that's going to enable us to walk through the programming of the decoders. Um, so if you notice here, this is the desktop. Uh, I have two main programs that I use for programming, and that is the Loc Programmer and Decoder Pro. Um, Decoder Pro I use primarily for my non-sound decoders and also to run the railroad. So if I open it up, you can see that I have a, my roster built into it. Um, you can do programming. The programming track is connected to the JMRI software through a Digitrax PR3. Um, if you have further questions on that, you know, refer back to uh, the DCC video that I did in the construction series or go on... Um, the Digitrax website and you can learn more. Um, it is a little uh, dated piece of equipment because I have an older system. I know with the newer, newer systems they are um, already equipped with it built in so it kind of eliminates the need. So this is the JMRI roster and uh, we'll talk about that more later. Now this is Log Programmer. Uh, Log Programmer are, is primarily used for the ESU products. Um, you need to use this if you're going to be doing any sound decoders uh, through ESU. Um, I have not had very good success with using JMRI to program ESU decoders. It just does not talk. It doesn't uh, communicate. And uh, so just easier to do the, uh, the Loc Programmer. However, you do have to buy the Loc Programmer uh, box, uh, which is about 126 bucks, so it's an additional cost. Um, but I also have one and that is connected to my programming track as well. Okay everyone, so uh, we're going to get started programming this U25B. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to um, ESU's website and I go to the list for Loc Sound Select Retail Sound Files. I'm going to scroll down here. Actually on page one is the early FDL which matches for the U25B. So then the next part, what we need to do is I have my programming track selected to the Loc Programmer. And I'll come, come down here and select Download. And select Loc Sound Select Direct Micro. And that's the file for the decoder that we're using. Once I download it, I hit Open like this. And it opens my Loc Programmer. I have a new version for my low programmer available. So I'm going to go ahead and download that before I get going. Okay, so before I get started, what I like to do is I like to update my decoder firmware. And the firmware is done. So what I need to do now is I'm going to select long address because I want to put the address into the decoder while I do the sound file download. And I'm going to use 2664 as my address. And then I'm going to come up here and write my decoder data. All right, so I programmed the address, and now I'm going to write the sound data. Now this is the part that takes up to 30 minutes. All right, so we'll let that run for a little while, and uh, we'll check back. Okay, so now that our project is all done, one of the last things I like to do is I like to go ahead and make a uh, roster entry for the locomotive. Now, when you use JMRI to do your programming uh, for the decoder, it automatically generates the roster entry, so it, it's like a one-step process. 
but because we use Log Programmer, we now have to come into JMRI and make a separate roster entry. So normally when you would be doing programming, it would be selected here on the programming track, or if you're adjusting CVs, you can uh, program on the main. This time we're going to be just doing an edit only file. We're not going to be changing any decoder um, parameters. We're just going to be making a new entry. So we're going to do edit only and then we're going to come up here to new loco. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down the list and we're going to open the ESU decoders. We are dealing with a loc sound and select direct micro. Okay, uh, new loco. So when I do my roster entry, I call it what it is. Conrail U25. U25. B. Number 2664. We're going to use our long address, 2664, and then we're going to open Comprehensive Programmer. It takes a minute. This idea is that we do Road name is Conrail. Road number is 2664. Manufacturer is Atlas. I'm the owner and it is a U25B. Now at this point you can go to your basic controls and do anything else you need to do. But that's all we're going to do. So we will write all sheets. Oh wait, sorry, we're not going to write all sheets, we're going to save. Now it is saved. So now if we come down here into our roster, you can see U25B. Number six, 2664 is here. Now, here's something else I like to do. I go to Labels and Media by right clicking on the unit, pull up the roster media. Now if I go in here to my file explorer, go to my network, I have a roster file of all of the pictures. I'm going to scroll down to 2664 and I'm going to drag it into this block here and close that and get that out of the way and I'll save it to the roster. So now when you select on 2664 the little picture shows up. Okay, so there you go. That's how we did it. Very happy with the project. Uh, it came out really nice. Uh, runs really good too. Um, these Atlas Classics, they got that slow motor in it. So their top speed isn't too good, but their, their low speed operation is very smooth. Really good control. And these are older units. I think they've been sitting around for a little while uh, because when I first started running them, uh, needed a lot of lubrication. So what I ended up doing was using conductive lube on all points of contact on the trucks. I also put a drop in on each side of the motor bearing, and then I put some in, which I very rarely do, on the top on the worm gear, and uh, yeah, ran very nice. All right, so uh, 
Let me put this disclaimer out there because I know it's going to be coming soon. Yes, 1988 is the year we're modeling and we got a U25s running. Um, so I've made the determination that a uh, number one is I want to represent some earlier years so I can kind of, you know, mess around and play around, do some videos with some of the rainbow years and, and uh, some of the early stuff. So that's why I got these units. I'm like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do them, even though I'm sticking to 88. Um, I will, may, when it comes to op sessions, uh, I'll throw them out there anyway because I just want to represent them. They're really nice and they sound really neat. When I fired up that ESU decoder for the first time, I'm like, oh, that sounds really neat. And that, that Roots turbocharger when it kicks in, that whistling, that's really cool. So, uh, yeah, so 1988, we're still got U25s floating around, but that's what it is. It is what it is. All right, everyone, so that's all I have for you this time on the local motor shop. I hope you enjoyed following along. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun doing it, uh, very happy with it. And uh, tune in next time. Uh, we're going to be doing the next U25 in this series and uh, going to be looking a very different. So uh, stay tuned and uh, see what we're going to be doing next time. All right, everyone, so that's all I have for you this time on the local motor shop. If you like what you're seeing, you're seeing this video for the first time, please subscribe to our channel because we're always doing a lot of videos like this. Don't forget to check out our Instagram and Facebook page because we're always posting daily updates of all the projects that we're doing. And that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.